So this morning, Steve Kleber, I said that right, right, Steve? Great. This morning, Steve Kleber is presenting Differentiating Your Business Through the Health and Wellness Movement. Um, Steve is the founder of Kleber & Associates, or K&A, a full-service marketing and communications agency founded in 1987 with a focus on the home and building channel. Steve has a deep understanding of the residential and commercial building industry and brings valuable insights on current market trends and innovations. He frequently speaks at key industry events on the topics of sales and marketing alignment, how to grow brands and drive more revenue, and wellness-related topics. So without further ado, uh, please give a round of applause for Steve. Thanks, Steve. Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to Coverings. I'm so glad we're here together face-to-face. -face. We don't have masks on anymore. You know, the last time we had a pandemic was 2000 and, or, uh, 1918, and what followed was the Roaring Twenties. Now, of course, every time that we have something, it never comes back to the exact same place, but I'd like to think that we are heading into what could be the Roaring Twenties. Uh, as CJ said, this uh, program is um, available for CEU credits for AIA, the American Institute of Architects, the IDCEC, and the NKBA. So here's some information about that and the forms that CJ recommended in the back. Again, Steve Kleber, I'm president of Kleber & Associates. We're a marketing communications firm that specializes in home and building products. We've been building better brands that build better living spaces since 1987. I'm the president of the National Remodeling Foundation, the immediate past president of the Center for Kitchen and Bath Education and Research, and I serve on the boards of the Home Projects Council, as well as the Global Opportunities Board of the National Association of Home Builders. But perhaps most important in terms of this presentation on health and wellness, I am certified within wellness within your walls. So let's talk about health and wellness. As I said, we are coming out of this terrible couple of years, and it's a new opportunity. We're not going to go back to the way that it was, but we are, I believe, going to continue to be concerned about health and wellness. Let's talk about the learning objectives of what we hope to accomplish here together. There's a 10-step approach to achieving health and wellness. And some of this sounds like science, but it's actually going to be a lot of fun and a lot of opportunity for you all to grow your business. We're going to talk about clean air, clean water, how these inv invigorate our living spaces, natural light, chemical control, physical wellness, mental wellness, spiritual wellness, conspicuous consumption, conscious consumption, food science, and behavior strategies. We're going to explain how to evaluate products. These are the same kind of products that you see in the trade show floor here at Coverings, and to determine which ones will best align. I'm not allowed to talk about individual brands, but you may recognize some of them in the photos. We're going to list several ways to increase your business and to look to expand your client base based on wellness principles. And we're going to demonstrate an understanding of the proven methods that you too can use to promote health and wellness to those kinds of consumers who are interested already in that concept. Let's talk about some overall market trends. The market is great. Is anyone worried about interest rates? Well, of course we all are. Is anyone worried about the next pandemic strain that's going to hit our shores? I see a lot of people shaking your head. But it's a great time. According to the NAHB economist Robert Dietz, he expects that the remodeling activity is going to continue to grow throughout 2022. Of course, it's not without challenges. We have disruptions to our supply chain, double-digit price material increases, and delays in shipping. I still can't figure out how trees were affected by this pandemic. They didn't stop growing and it really wasn't that hard to cut them down. But that being said, we're dealing with volatility on everything from computer chips and appliances to the cost of lumber. But housing starts have continued to increase, in fact up 6.8% at the end of February, which if you can believe it is the highest rate since mid-2006. 
At the same time, the supply of homes is at an all-time low, and people are bidding up the price of homes, multiple bids. The biggest problem today is that banks can't find an appraisal that will meet the price that someone is willing to pay over the asking price. So there will continue to be challenges despite what seems to be good times. Homes are getting larger, which was really surprising. Perhaps not since we were spending so much time at home. The homes were designed to accommodate remote working and remote learning. We're not going to talk about home offices. You've heard a lot about that because people are coming back to school. People are coming back to the office. Millennials and Gen X in particular are interested in larger homes. It's kind of surprising. That is designed to accommodate multiple generations. Now this concept, although it may sound new, actually has a lot of roots in history. Our neighbors to the south of the border, border South, uh, south American, um, Mexican, Native American, I don't mean to get into uh, stereotyping, but in marketing, we target individuals and groups and try to learn on their similarities. Even the Dutch Amish and the Mennonite, they have all celebrated multi-generational living, where the grandparents live in the same home, perhaps off on a wing. And it makes a lot of sense because they can babysit the kids at the same time we might have dual income parents who are out of the house. And so it's really a a symbiotic relationship, mutually rewarding, and we predict that that's going to continue. According to the National Association of Home Builders, in a report that just came out last month, what home buyers really want, they want homes with four plus bedrooms and three plus full baths. That's increased to 46 and 34 percent, respectively. But these homes are not going to be the same, whether you have the same footprint or you're building from scratch or remodeling. The spaces are going to have different functions. Each space needs to be deconstructed and then redesigned to talk about better, healthier outcomes. Doesn't mean that we have to have more space. It means that our space is going to have to be intentional in terms of how we think it. I know I'm talking to manufacturers as well as designers and channel industry professionals. These applications are the same for each and every one of you. For designers, the goal is to help your clients to, to get resettled back into that home using a holistic approach in specifying health and wellness features. For brands, if you're a manufacturer, the goal is to get wellness products in front of your forward-facing troops, the architects, the designers, the contractors, the dealers, and other audiences who are already interested in features and promises of health and wellness. As we move into this brave new world around us, branding is going to be most important around health and wellness. But we want to take a holistic approach to this concept. We want to look at the body, the spirit, and the soul and create a new balance for these opportunities. Most important, living in a capitalistic society, we want to invigorate our bottom lines. So let's dive deep into health and wellness. According to science and facts, this is a $4.5 trillion opportunity, and it's growing twice as fast as the global economy. According to some research and gap analysis, there were three groups of people who commented on health and wellness. 77% thought that it was important to align with wellness products. 73% actually said it was essential in order to redefine your brand. And 59% said they would be willing to pay more for that opportunity. More consumers are looking to buy new homes or to remodel their existing ones. And they're looking for those homes to better suit their purposes, to be more functional. More money is being invested into health and wellness. And for that reason alone, it should be of interest to us. Consumers not only want a versatile home, they want a healthy home. Savvy builders and remodelers understand this, and they're leveraging the increased opportunity to grow their business, and you can too. This is not just a trend, although we are hyper-focused on washing our hands and masking when we're in limited spaces, still on airplanes and in taxi cabs, but integrating wellness into your brand is not a trend. 
It's not a fad. It is here to stay. So how are we going to invigorate our business? First, like anything that we learned in Marketing 101, we've got to create a plan. It's got to have a target to market and promote wellness in your brand. They say if it isn't measured, it didn't happen. So it is important to create a business plan, a marketing plan, and a promotional plan. We're not so much here to talk about how to develop the plan, just what the opportunity is. Suffice it to say, it needs to be measured so that you can find the return on investment over the baseline that you had in the previous year. That way you're going to renew the opportunity to continue to create that momentum. It may seem like a contrarian approach now, but soon you'll be able to recognize that return on investment and know that you have done the right things. The first thing to do is to align with brands that have already created home and wellness concepts. That way you won't feel like you're starting over. All you have to do is create some magnetic attraction to audiences that already exist. So if you're a designer, co-branding will allow your audience to be able to say, yes, I too am buying those products in the grocery store or I'm paying attention to those other brands. If you're a manufacturer, this allows you to optimize your budgets. Most importantly is not to forget that you need a new elevator speech. Whatever you may have said before, you're going to have to say it differently now if you believe in aligning with health and wellness. The idea is you can't be everything from everyone, for everyone. They say if you'll fall for anything, then you don't stand for something. And the important thing that I'm recommending here is that you do stand for this. And you're able to say it in the amount of time that it takes to ride in an elevator if somebody were to ask about your business. That's why they call it an elevator speech. So in eight words or in 30 seconds or less, can you explain your reason for being as a brand or as an allied professional? In your organization, both sales and marketing needs to be aligned. They need to be able to walk in each other's shoes and understand the customer journey. It's what we call sales and marketing alignment. Most businesses measure on sales. They call it the bottom line. Most CEOs are um, committed to their stakeholders and there's only one way to measure. Now there are several different ways to measure marketing, but unfortunately they are much harder to be able to define. The, term, the value associated with shares and likes and increased brand awareness. So what happens is this age old concept where sales and marketing points fingers at each other. Sales says to marketing, you never bring me any kind of leads that I can actually follow up on. Marketing retorts and says, you don't follow up on the leads that I brought you. So the concept is whether you're one or two persons in a company or a large global multi-brand organization, you've got to be aligned between both your sales efforts and your marketing efforts. Sounds good? How do we achieve these goals? Well, the first thing is to do what we call ride-alongs. Why are the salespeople the only ones that are out there with windshield time? Bring the marketing folks too. Going to CEUs like this one here, lunch and learns with architects, supply house counters and showrooms, so that the marketing people can see what the salespeople deal with in terms of overcoming objections, being in the trenches with hand-to-hand -hand combat, and similarly, bring the salespeople up to those ivory towers that were once resided only by the marketing people and make sure that the sales meetings and the marketing meetings are combined so that both aligned forces are going after this new health and wellness strategy. I started in the business world long before my agency working in restaurants. In the first restaurant that I worked for, the waiters got all the tips, just like the salespeople get all the commissions. But progressive restaurants that I learned later on understood that when they pooled the tips, they were able to incent the busboys to clear the tables quicker and to bring ice for the bartenders. The idea was that the tide rose for all the ships when we worked together. 
Now, it doesn't mean that the marketing people necessarily have to share the commissions the way that the busboys shared the tips, but it does mean that they need to be incented and rewarded. Perhaps it's a day off or some kind of recognition. However it's worked out, the marketing people and the salespeople have to have a stake in the same game. So let's talk about rejuvenating. It's time to unplug from your old brand and refresh to a renewed focus. How do we promote wellness design? Well, there's this organization, you've probably heard of it, it's called Google. And they have attempted and are pretty darn successful in organizing the entire internet. So when you're marketing materials and all of your communication, you must use the type of key words that are already attracting health and wellness audiences. You know, they say, fish where the fish are. So use words like organic, conscious, health, wellness, rejuvenation, sustainability, and well-being. Make sure your photography is excellent. What do they say? A picture is worth a thousand words. We just talked about how important words are to Google. Well, photography is even more important these days with lifestyle imagery. And you might say, Steve, photography is so expensive. I can't afford to bring a photographer out to every one of my installations. Well, I'm here to say that you can buy professional photography for literally tens of dollars, not hundreds of dollars, through resources like iStock and Adobe, Getty Images, and Shutterstock. Consider working with a three-dimensional illustrator. You would be surprised at how realistic interiors now look and can be courted into the wellness concept all with the digital convenience of a computer. And it's not limited to interiors. Here is a 3D image that was constructed on a computer of an exterior. The two most important rooms in the home, as you're probably aware here at Coverings, is the kitchen and bath. And it didn't used to be this way. The kitchen used to be behind the house where it was all dirty and dusty and smelly and people used to bring the food in from the outside. Now the kitchen is the center of the house. When we talk about appliances in the kitchen, we shouldn't just talk about appliance, we should talk about appliance science. What does that mean? Being familiar with convection and induction, not just electric and gas. And sous vide, where you're using vacuum seal preserving in order to be able to slowly bring a food up to temperature. Surfaces are so important. Perhaps you were just here with the Natural Stone Institute who was talking about using natural stone, concrete, repurposed wood, butcher block, and most importantly, quartz and stainless steel for their antimicrobial and man-made value-added properties. The right surface can set a kitchen apart. When we talk about countertops, we're not far from the sink and the faucet where water is being brought into our home and down the drain. So we want to talk about touchless faucets. It shouldn't just be our hands that we wipe when we come into the door. There's no reason that we have to touch a faucet anymore. It can be touchless. Point of use filtration so that we can remove known contaminants and water bottle filters so that we're avoiding single-use plastics. A kitchen isn't just one room. A kitchen can be so many rooms. We talked about how it used to be in the back of the house and now it's the hub. Well, now it's rethought intentionally and it's deconstructed. It's a pantry and a scullery. It's a morning kitchen. It's a coffee station. It's a bar. It's a lounge. It's a mixology kitchen. It's an outdoor kitchen. It's a multi-generational kitchen. It's a wine room. It's a cellar or a loft. It's a recycling area suitable for composting. Touchless water refill station, herb walls, hydroponic and aquaponic gardens. We just thought it was about refrigeration. When designing a luxury kitchen, what should you be looking for? We're going to talk about the luxury kitchen as well as a moderate cost budget and look at the similarities because not everyone has the champagne budget. Some actually prefer beer. Here's the pantry and the scullery that I was talking about. 
Take a look at these. We're talking about black, wrought iron and glass, designer paint colors. Look at the ladders to be able to uh, uh, retrieve the ingredients to cook that gourmet meal. Here's a morning kitchen. A kitchen doesn't necessarily have to be part of the other room. It can be as simple as a refrigerator and a coffee pot, or it can be part of your master suite. It's actually not appropriate to call it a master suite anymore. We should be calling it the main room in the house. But in either case, this is a situation where you can see the image where there's a warming drawer. It's not just a coffee pot. Why not have actual croissants available for your morning kitchen? A lot of people during the pandemic found time for happy hour every day. So now, instead of it being part of that same room, you can find other parts of the house to be able to look at having a bar since people weren't going to restaurants. They've learned to appreciate what it's like to have a lounge and to understand craft cocktails and mixology. There are products and places within the home to be able to design those kinds of opportunities. And must a kitchen be indoors? Why not remove all four walls and learn to appreciate vitamin D that comes from natural light and wood-burning pizza ovens? Remember we talked about the multi-generation and how that's now an important part of growing the footprint of the home? Look at the amount of seating in these photos to accommodate that extended family, the number of bar stools and the separate breakfast area. We talked about wine rooms. In addition to the lounge and bar area, now we're talking about collecting wine. On the one on the left was actually an attic conversion. So instead of it being a cellar, it became a wine loft. The one in the middle doesn't have refrigeration, but it's got plenty of opportunity to store bottles. And on the one on the right is using a convenient barrel from a, from a vintage cellar to be a tasting table. Recycling, we're aware of Earth's resources associated with this health and wellness movement. Everything can be hided, hidden behind cabinets so that we can sort both plastic and glass and metal and be able to return them. Everything can be hidden so it doesn't have to look like an area suited to go back to the neighborhood dump. Composting can be as simple as having a countertop appliance or just an area where you can take your vegetable peels and your coffee grinds and your eggshells and be able to bring them outdoors to grow herbs and vegetables. Speaking of herbs and vegetables, there are appliances now for aquaponics and hydroponics where we can actually grow the herbs and snip them just in time to incorporate them into our cooking. These are real appliances. This isn't just a concept. And these are ways to be able to grow your brand and your opportunity with your customers. Talked about water fill stations. Here are three applications where you could fill up a bottle of water, or two or three, and take them with you to the gym, take them with you when you're back at the office, and again, to be able to avoid single-use plastics. Starbucks is talking, I see a lot of Starbucks cups out here, they're talking about banning cups in the near future where you're going to bring your own. There's also water filtration available where it can be as simple as a pitcher that will remove known contaminants to an entire whole house reverse osmosis system. People are concerned about their health and wellness. Now, for a moderate kitchen, we can have all of the same opportunities. It isn't just limited to those kitchens that you might see in Architectural Digest. The same pantry, the same wine cabinet, the same outdoor grilling, multi-generational kitchens, herb walls, hydroponic gardens, recycling, composting, and uh, water filtration that we just talked about. I'll show you how it can be done on a lower cost budget. Here's the pantry or scullery. The picture on the left is using baskets for storage. The one in the middle, a butcher block countertop to be able to store point of use. And the one on the right, ready to assemble cabinets that you might be able to get at Home Depot or Ikea that can be painted. 
Same kind of organizational, same kind of de-stressing of your life, just on a different budget. The wine room's the same way. The one on the left, here's a refrigerated column, suitable for a couple of cases of wine or champagne. The one in the middle is quarter size, but it's got refrigerator drawers that accompany the type of wine that's stored in the glass cabinet. And the one on the right, again, when refrigeration isn't in the budget, you can just have simple racking. In this case, you've got a place to decant and um, decork. Outdoor, same thing. You may not have enough budget for a wood-burning pizza oven, but you certainly can use a smoker. I come from Georgia, the home of the big green egg, but I happen to like the black with the stainless steel because it matches the knobs that are already on your barbecue grill and the stainless steel that's part of the hood. In the multi-generational kitchen, you're going to have less of a footprint, but that doesn't mean that you won't still be able to divide the room up for multi-generation with bar stools and separate areas for seating. The hydroponic garden, you might say, I can't afford those kinds of space or technology. Well, this one is as simple as galvanized pipe. And the one on the right is a depression cut out of a old butcher block. And it's suitable not only for growing herbs, but also chilling wine. Recycling and composting, again, without the appliance, now just an opportunity to create a water-resistant canvas bag or even just a simple container where you can bring that compost out into the garden. Water filtration, the same way. Here's an example where it's built into the refrigerator without the need for a separate appliance or a countertop pitcher to be able to remove the known contaminants. Okay, moderate kitchen, luxury kitchen. Now let's talk about the bathroom, the healthy bathroom. Plumbing is what is most known for the bathroom, the ability to bring water in and the ability to take waste out. So we're looking at soaking tubs, touchless faucets, toilets with integrated bidets, and dual flush buttons. People are getting back out, they're traveling again, and they're experiencing the type of spa vacations that they want to maintain at home. Or if they have never left the house, they're still looking for what we call staycations. The surfaces that you're familiar with here at Coverings and that you're looking at all of the beautiful opportunities involve porcelain, ceramic, glass, quartz, natural stone and marble, and also curbless showers. I don't want to spend a lot of time on it, but we want to be conscious associated with living in place. It's not about aging in place that it used to be called. It's now in the health and wellness vernacular called living in place. And if anybody is a contractor or a designer here, there's no reason you can't go ahead and put blocking behind the shower so that in the future you can put a grab bar that might seem to be unsightly now, but will be certainly very convenient as somebody is aging in place. There's no need for steps on the front door so you won't have to build a ramp over it. The doors should be wide enough to accommodate a wheelchair. And why not have all of the closets built onto a central core so that eventually that can be turned into an elevator when needed. Better brands are innovating and they're simulating the look of natural stone and they're bringing this connection to living spaces even when you're looking for antimicrobial surfaces like quartz. One thing to be aware of, there are certain surfaces promising antimicrobial properties that are based on a silver concept and be careful especially on shower pans because that silver can ultimately leach out into the water system. But it's not just about the surfaces. You've got to be familiar with and specify the type of installation materials that are well and holistic in terms of their properties. The grout that contractors just wash down the drain can bring caustic problems into our water system. There are literally pro uh, products that have zero risk associated with installation and they're worth seeking out. Proper ventilation is also the key. You know, we're entering another energy crisis. The last one was in the early 70s. And what happened was homes used to breathe 
It was like the way our grandparents put our wash out onto the line. The sunlight and the air was nature's disinfectant, and the homes would have that same air and sunlight come in. But in an attempt to save energy, we started tightening up our homes. We caulked the windows and around the electrical outlets, and sure enough, we did reduce our energy. We were good sense homes, I think it was called. But we had some unintended consequences. What happened was we started trapping contaminants, off-gassing from formaldehyde and from carpet and laminates, and moisture that caused mold and mildew. So it's important to have the proper kind of ventilation, particularly in a bathroom. Because after all, there's only two things that we really do in a bathroom. We introduce water and we introduce smell. So we can have ventilation that is VOC sensing and humidistats that turn on only when they sense the moisture and don't run continuously. It's all part of smart home technology that's also tied into health and wellness. In the bathroom, just like the kitchen, it's not just one room. It's multiple rooms, it's a soaking room, it's a sauna, it's a steam room. It's as simple as a heated towel rack, water filtration. And remember that bathrooms are often a place where we store medicine. So we think about it in terms of an apothecary. It's a glamour room, it's a place for a magnifying mirror. And it's a place for an outdoor shower or bath that doesn't belong inside the house. Here's an idea of three soaking rooms, each one with a tub. The one on the left with a lot of vitamin D natural light. The one in the middle, we're adding a little privacy. You can see where the light comes in from above. And the one on the right with an antique vintage soaking tub and the black wrought iron glass wall. Saunas can be brought into a space. Look at the one on the left that's actually tucked in under a stairwell. Everything that we're talking about here today doesn't mean that the footprint of the house has to grow. It means that we're intentionally thinking through the lifestyle of the resident who lives inside that home and making sure that we have products and services to be able to promote their health and wellness. Steam rooms typically located on the ground level, but the one on the right there has a window where you can look into the treetops. Each one of these is going to bring in nurturing health and wellness applications into a bathroom or an adjacent room. I mentioned before about heated towel racks. This is an incredible opportunity to bring health and wellness with the simplicity of just plugging it in. What's more nurturing than to be able to have a heated towel available after you come out of your shower or after you come out of your bath? But it's not just for luxury. Did you realize that when you heat the towel, you eliminate a lot of the mildew and you avoid the need to launder that towel after each use. As you warm it up, you're also drying it out. Also promoting sleep. There have been recent studies that says if you take a hot bath or a shower 90 minutes before you go to sleep and wrap yourself in that warm towel, you'll actually be able to sleep better. That's part of health and wellness and how it relates to our home. I mentioned a minute ago about medicine cabinets. That's the way it used to be called. Now we talk about apothecary. And it can be as simple as that behind the mirror, but in terms of intentionalness, we should be locking up some of our medicines. And there are opportunities to be able to create sensors where the medicine is available when the homeowners are there and it can be locked up when they're away. The one in the middle, the photo in the middle, it shows drawers that can be locked. And the one on the right, an entire cabinet devoted to this apothecary room. We're all about self-care. So it's about makeup and how do we look? Glam rooms, but there's no reason we can't bring natural light in, which you'll see in the middle photo. Speaking of mirrors, magnifying mirrors. These are simple. Just have it displayed on the countertop or being able to uh, install on the, on the wall with an articulated arm. The one in the middle I'm particularly impressed with as we have natural LED light that glows from around and they also can be incorporated with 
television so that you can actually watch when you're getting ready. Sometimes the savings of time is perhaps the most luxury for health and wellness. Again, a bathroom doesn't have to be inside the house and it doesn't have to have four walls. Just like the outdoor kitchen, we also can have outdoor soaking tubs and outdoor uh, shower heads. These are all products that manufacturers can be bringing to the marketplace and designers and the building channel and the remodeling channel can take existing space right off the back of the house. Doesn't require pouring a new foundation. Let's not just stop at kitchens and baths though. There's also the laundry room. The laundry room too is more than one kind of facility. We look at appliances, stacked appliances versus side by side. A laundry room can go into the garage to take over existing space. We had a lot of pandemic puppies that were adopted during the last two years. Let's create pet washing stations for our residents. Again, another application to be able to bring plumbing products and appliances into the home for manufacturers and for designers. We're not going to the steam cleaner as much, the dry cleaner as much, and so we can bring some of these appliances into our home, and we can reduce the amount of laundry detergent by using ionic purifiers. Here's a situation where we are comparing between the stacked washer and dryer and the side-by-side. -side. A lot of the application is based on the way that the doors swing out into the room and how it affects the traffic flow. One interesting technique that you may not have considered is in an oversized closet to actually have the washer and dryer built into the island so that when someone comes back from a vacation, they can drop their suitcase on top of that island, much like you use the island in the kitchen, and to be able to have that point of use plumbing device right there in the closet so you don't have to drag those uh, articles down the hall or down the stairs. As I said, laundry rooms don't have to be inside the house. They can be part of a garage. Look at these. Do they look like a garage? They look like a specialty application, but again, it was just removing some of the kids' sports equipment and to be able to turn it into a new space, intentionally thinking about health and wellness and lifestyle. Here's those pet washing stations that I just alluded to. Plumbing, tile, applications for appliances, Utilization for cabinetry. These are all new opportunities to take over existing space and to be able to align with branded merchandise. Dry cleaners, we may not need them anymore. Here are opportunities to bring in a garment steam cabinet or what they call a personal valet. And that way you can control the amount of chemicals that are coming into your house. Simple tip to tell your clients, Remove the bag from your dry cleaning and let your clothes off gas before you bring them into the house. Costs nothing, but it is intentional in its thinking about health and wellness. A little bit more scientific is an ionic system that eliminates some of the soap. It's using technology. A little bit of additional cost up front, but we're reducing the amount of suds that are going into the water system and your clients are going to appreciate your knowledge and your ability to help them create wealth and wellness and health in their lifestyle. Every space in the house has an opportunity to be rethought and repurposed. Remember we talked about deconstructing and reconstructing. Here's just a corner of a room and it's full of the Peloton pipe bike and the, and the medicine ball and the the barbells, it's just a corner, but it's a flex space. We're now tying into people's need for exercise and yoga, interactive fitness mirrors where we can actually get training inside our house. And look at each of these three examples. All of them are just using a corner of a home. We're not talking about busting out a wall and worrying about uh, new kinds of structure. We're just talking about being intentional associated with our thoughts of health and wellness. So after you've decided there are many applications for you to build your brand, 
You want to be able to showcase it so the audience comes to you instead of you having to go find them. You want to leverage this newfound expertise and product knowledge. Don't be afraid to toot your horn about health and wellness and teach the principles of wellness design. And you can do it for free. You use the internet where communication travels at no cost. You don't have to buy an ad in a magazine because after all, what is a magazine? And I'm sure there's plenty of folks out here in, in the audience who's going to say, don't talk bad about magazines, Steve. That's your, that's your whole reason for being as an advertising agency. But in the end, media is content and distribution of content to an audience. And you can do this with an e-newsletter. You can create your own content about health and wellness, and you can attract your own audience and be able to communicate with them. I communicate every week with my audience, and here's the one that we got started with at the beginning of the new year. You want to make sure that you're using social media, which is also free in order to be able to influence the influencers. Are you all aware that there is a Twitter community called KB Tribe Chat? They're actually going to be on the showroom floor tomorrow at 2 o'clock. And it's the greatest thing that you've ever seen. Here are groups of people that are going to be sitting shoulder to shoulder and face to face and not saying a word. They're going to be on their phones communicating with each other on Twitter. But that's where the people are. That's where the influencers are. And that's where you should be, too, to have that strong media presence. And you want to be able to use video. I know the gentleman in the back with the video camera would agree to me. But video cameras have come down in cost, and they're accessible. And you probably know, speaking of Google, that YouTube is owned by Google. And so you're going to be able to create the search friendliness associated with that high quality video. Start a wellness blog. And if you're not ready to start a wellness blog, contribute to another one that already exists. The point is, as we talked about before, you want to fish where the fish are. There's enough people already interested in health and wellness that you can align with them. Partner with those influencers. They're looking for photography. They're looking for case studies. Manufacturers are looking for applications of how their products fit into today's health conscious consumers. So it's all about expanding your client base. The desire for remodeling is going to continue to grow. There's enough information that you have to know that while we may or may not be heading into the Roaring Twenties, we're certainly going to be thinking about our spaces. The good news is, now that we have reduced our need for masks, people are also more interested in having contractors inside their home, which was a challenge over the last couple of years. So we want to look at opportunities for product integration or product placement. Here are two examples of weekly radio and television shows that are interested in learning about your products and your designs. Today's homeowner with Danny Lipford and On the House with the Carey Brothers. They attract the weekend warriors every single weekend and they're looking to align with you as manufacturers and designers. Here's one that my agency did just a couple of weeks ago with Chip Wade on Fox and Friends where we were promoting the heated towel rack that we just talked about. Radio shows, syndicated television, who thought that you would be able to actually ever be able to accomplish that? That's only for big budget advertisers, right? No, it's about product donation and just making networking opportunities. The other opportunities that you can do is with design centers and show homes. Every community has a model home, and many magazines also have designer media tours. The good news is we're extending that traffic because many of these designer homes are now virtual, where we'll be able to extend that foot traffic into television and computer. Magazines put these demonstration homes on where you'll be able to get the advantages of both digital and print. 
So it's important to align with those magazines, network with them. You may have noticed out in the lobby here, there are associated magazines listed that are connected with coverings. So they're all here, the editors and the opportunity to be able to talk about your branded products and your designs with those kinds of magazines. Show homes can stay open in some neighborhoods for just a few short weeks, and other times they can stay open for years, extending your window to be able to promote your name and your products. The idea is to align with a builder or a remodeling contractor so that they can bring the traffic to your design or to your manufactured products. As a designer, understand about these types of products that I just talked about. They should be familiar with you. You should be able to promote them to your audience, whether it's on a blog or face-to-face. -face. Create relationships with manufacturers and distribution centers so you will be a wealth of information. Back to the antimicrobial surfaces. I told you I grew up in the, working in the commercial kitchen. That's where stainless steel came from. Professional chefs knew and continue to know that it wasn't a fashion decision to use stainless steel in the kitchen. It was designed to reduce foodborne illness. And so today, when we start thinking about health and wellness, we want to make sure that we're attuned to antimicrobial surfaces like stainless steel and also quartz, so that when we have chicken guts on the countertop, we're not spreading salmonella. Quartz, along with ceramic, glass, natural stone, and porcelain, they're all available in different sizes and thicknesses to allow your opportunities to continue to run wild. They're suited for a variety of applications, particularly in the kitchen and bath, but also, as we saw, in the laundry room. And in terms of outdoor kitchens, there are quartz countertops that actually have resistance to UV light so that they are suitable not only for interior use, but also exterior use to give us that nature's vitamin D. Plumbing is so important. Make sure that your toilets are specified as dual flush so that when they're solid waste, we can use a little bit more water when needed. But when it's liquid waste, we don't need to use as much water and we can flush with the other button. Speaking of water, low flow shower heads and faucets. Of course, code controls much of this, but there is also discretion where manufacturers are using aeration to be able to improve the user experience and performance of how water is delivered and taken away. Flooring, there's bamboo, carpet, ceramic tile, concrete, and cork. There's engineered wood, hardwood, laminate, luxury vinyl, all kinds of opportunities to be able to bring health and wellness in. Just make sure that they're manufactured without the VOCs. Today's ceramics go well beyond what used to be merely limestone and terracotta. Concrete is something to look at because you've got both the subfloor and the floor in the same product. It can be scored and colored and bring a deconstructed look to a particular room. Cork, again, not just for wine bottles. This is an opportunity to talk about sustainability since it's a natural product that continues to grow after it's harvested, just like bamboo, which is actually a grass. The nice thing about cork is it also keeps noise down, so we're bringing in some intentionality associated with that, particularly in multifamily dwellings. Engineered wood has come a long way. You know, it used to be that click, 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 and you could tell that it wasn't real hardwood. Well, today, they are mirroring nature's finest. And again, look for products that don't have a lot of VOCs so that you're not going to have that off-gassing after you have the beauty in the house. Hardwoods, of course, that's the real thing. That's Mother Nature. But be intentional. Sometimes products are labeled sustainably harvest forest, but then they're shipped on dirty diesel ocean liners halfway across the world. So look for locally sourced products. Again, you're going to be more intentional associated with how you brand your identity. Laminates look like marble now especially if the budget doesn't allow the real thing. And luxury vinyl tile and luxury vinyl plank is great to fool the eyes. We talked about purification before, whether it's VOC sensing exhaust fans, 
humidistats, whole house humidification, or simply just an add-on. This is something that can be bolted onto an HVAC system and brought in with some uh, venting. So let's recap. In the kitchen, it's not just one room. It's the pantry, it's the scullery. This is an opportunity for you to develop products and designs for morning kitchens and coffee stations, for bars, for lounge areas, mixology, outdoor kitchens, indoor kitchens. Some have walls, some don't. Multi-generational kitchens to understand lifestyle when you're having potentially three female head of households. Think about it. The widowed grandmother, the divorced mother, and the boomerang daughter who has just come back from college without a job. Each one of them might want their own main suite with their own morning kitchen and warming drawer, microwave oven and refrigerator. Each one with their own spa bath. Each one with their own workout room. How are you going to accommodate that? What kind of products are you going to be able to specify and design? Wine rooms, whether it be a cellar, and if, you don't, if you're built onto a slab, then convert an attic into a wine loft. Be conscious associated with recycling and composting. Understand that your consumers are now not going to the grocery store as often as they used to. They're using Instacart and Uber Eats, but they're also building uh, gardens to be able to harvest fresh ver herbs and vegetables. So design herb walls and hydroponic gardens right inside the home. And remember those water filling stations so that we can reduce the amount of single-use plastics. People can bring water with them. A bathroom is a soaking room. It's a sauna. It's a steam room. It's as simple as a heated towel rack. Water filtration in the bathroom as well as in the kitchen because as the water hits us from the shower, we're actually ingesting that water through our skin. It's apothecary. It's how we are being intentional about locking up medicine, glamour rooms, magnifying glasses, and interactive fitness mirrors. In the laundry room, remember, it can be in the garage if you don't have room to actually create one within the footprint. Stacked appliances are side by side. Think about the traffic patterns of your homes and specify or design the right kind of point of use washer and dryer. Remove the ability for toxins to be brought into the house through dry cleaning. As simple as removing the bag or having a garment steam cabinet or a personal valet inside your home and ionic laundry purifiers in order to reduce the amount of caustic suds. I wanted to leave a few minutes if anyone had any question and we could talk about situations that you may have found yourself in terms of health and wellness. Yes, sir. Uh, so quartz, uh, quartz, I heard. Yes, because it's a non-porous surface. The question was about quartz and how it was an antimicrobial. While it doesn't have a coating on it specifically, it is non-porous, which means that it doesn't have the fissures and cracks associated with wood and natural stone that is harder to seal. So it doesn't require as much constant maintenance. Is, is that your question? I haven't heard any problems about the resins or the um, glues associated with that. So quartz is, is a really great product. It is man-made, so just like I'm uh, inspiring you to be intentional associated with it. Now, I know it's not nice to fool Mother Nature, but these man-made products have value add that you may not have been able to achieve so you can have the look of Mother Nature without any of the imperfections associated with it. That's what is being celebrated as Mother Nature, those imperfections. But in terms of health and wellness, we may want to be concerned why restaurants use stainless steel, for example, to avoid foodborne illness. So too, do we want to make sure that our surfaces are not going to cause any kind of problems with our health and wellness. Anyone else? 
to take a quick poll. Um, designers, manufacturers, what kind of people? Architect, great. Design. Design. A designer, designer, architect, installer. installer. Those are the people you're you're being welcomed back into the home again, right? Good. Designers, designers, and architects. Uh, business representatives. Wonderful. We need all of you kind of people in order to be accomplishing this kind of opportunity. The architects and the designers who are understanding about the person who's living inside and the family who's living inside of that space and how that space can be more intentional and the craftspeople who actually come in and make sure that all of this stuff actually works. Any other questions? Well, thank you so much for the time that you invested with me today and everyone online. Thank you again.